Well, this talk is really about discovering useful insights from complex, massive data by applying the tools of pattern recognition. Now, search and discovery are different. If we're talking about discovery, we have to understand that search is great if you know what you're looking for, if there's one answer. And we've come a long way. Google, Blecko, and others have given us great tools. The problem with discovery is it's really harder than search because you don't know what you're looking for. And often there's more than one answer. And this is an area where we're really just starting because really, discovery is like looking for a needle in a haystack. So the question is, if you're going to build a recommendation engine, who do you trust? Do you trust crowds? Well, I would suggest that real discovery requires a foundation that's generated by experts with a detailed knowledge in a specific field of interest. So we're calling this Genomics 2.0. It's a pattern recognition system. It starts with a useful ontology. It's a buzzword for the structural framework for organizing information. Then you have to have a relevant taxonomy to name those attributes of the assets you're going to be working with. And then apply robust formulas, formulas, there you go, which can yield useful insights and hopefully some understanding and some wisdom. Tough problem. Human Genome Project led the way biochemists deconstructed DNA, about 25,000 genes, and then to understand the variations in DNA that make us unique, they focused on what they call SNPs, and then look for the patterns in this data to find useful insight. Well, that's nice from an academic viewpoint. What's a real-world example? It's a great company that's done some serious work in the area of breast cancer. Uh, should a patient have chemotherapy or not? Traditional wisdom is young women with large, fast-growing tumors are high risk for recurrence. Well, a company called Genomic Health took advantage of a fact that when you take a biopsy of a tumor, those slides kind of live forever. So they took thousands of slides over 10 years, which means they knew the outcome of those individual patients. So by being able to use the rearview mirror and look back and then forward at the results, they identified 21 specific genes that correlate with the risk of recurrence, whether a patient's likely to benefit from chemotherapy. Turns out conventional wisdom is only right about a third of the time. Now women who know they're low risk can avoid chemotherapy that won't help them, and in fact reduce the cost while improving the quality of health care at the same time. Discovering, oh, there we go. Discovering great music is a challenge. It's an area where Pandora has pioneered the Music Genome Project. They have musicologists, PhDs in music theory, that have deconstructed music into 400 elements, beats per minute, presence of parallel octaves, block chords, prevalence of harmony, chordal patterning, and such. And when they do that, and they understand the nuance of those ratings, they can actually activate a music discovery system that works. Case in point, TED 2007, for those of you who are here, you might remember that fabulous musician Raoul Madon. Go on Pandora and ask him who's similar to Raoul Madon, and you might be surprised to find that Jason Mraz, who's performing later this afternoon, maybe we've discovered the TED music genome here, and maybe we can look forward to who's going to come next by exploring this. Something I call the Yenta genome. How do you discover your perfect partner? Well, one way of doing it is structured. Look at life and love styles. Look at values and ideals. Systematic attacking a very important question of finding that romantic match. It's a company called perfectmatch.com. 50 elements designed by PhDs in behavioral science and psychology. And by filling in a profile, you're greeted with personalized recommendations for your perfect match. I did one for Ted. Looks like Ted's going to have a pretty good week. Um, how do you discover your perfect vacation? Well, you can deconstruct the attributes of a vacation. Activities like golf and tennis, interests like architecture and history. And then, when are you going to go? What do you want to spend? Are there ways of deconstructing leisure travel to figure out what a good trip for you might be? Turns out, Triparati's built a database of 2,000 destinations compiled by 77 experts who've written over 650 guidebooks. Similar to Pandora, they've deconstructed every destination into all these attributes. User says what they want to do, order of importance, one of 560 quadrillion unique combinations, a number actually bigger than the federal deficit, and they're greeted with a map of specific recommendations that a trip would be perfect for them with more information, not only from experts, but links to friends so that your friends can also guide you through their experiences. How do you move from knowledge to wisdom, though? Because sometimes the diagnosis isn't enough. You want a deeper level of pattern recognition. For example, you may want to be matched with a doctor that's treated patients like you. Or maybe you want to find a clinical trial that matches your particular biology and your geography. Well, there's a website now, breastcancertrials.org, that does exactly that. 
Now, don't think every challenge requires a complex computer program. Some people, like the autistic boy in the movie Mercury Rising, can see complex patterns innately. They reverse engineer the genome in real time, so to speak. Well, I spoke with Will I Am recently about how he came up with a recent hit, and he's just got an innate sense of the popular zeitgeist. He designed the beat, he set the key, and by no accident, I got a feeling, came from his innate understanding of what was going on in the genome. Predicting the next step for a vacation, it's simple, you got the best deals, but is this the right time to buy? Are prices going to change? Is there a travel agent that actually likes what I like and can direct me for things I care about? Those are also ways of going deeper. Examples of genomes everywhere, arguably Netflix has developed the best of breed film discovery platform. There's now an art genome. There's even a beer genome. There's a lot of people working on a finance genome, looking for complex patterns and finding ways to discover ways to be more proficient investing your capital. So if a decision takes a lot of time and money, and there's a lot riding on the decision like your health, evidence suggests that relying on experts for that recommendation is best. What disease might I have? Now, the wisdom of friends is great, great for validation. Anyone here been to Zanzibar? Give me some ideas. And checking with the crowds, well, maybe if it's less critical, like what song won the People's Choice Award, that might be interesting. But the issue is there's more data we generate, the more demand there is to make sense of it. How do we transform that knowledge into wisdom? I think Salman's Khan talk yesterday showed us flashes of an education genome and where that needs to go. There are other folks working on a startup genome to predict entrepreneurial success. Very interesting work going on in the area of politics, and if I can find Deb Roy later, I think the stuff he's working on will be examples of where candidates can get in front of hot issues and topics. There's also some great innovation going on in the arts. People at Berkeley Rep are trying to figure out which playwrights have the best talent to produce the best works. The whole point is to discover important insights, insights that can change the way we treat a disease, the music you listen to, the vacation you take, or maybe even the person you might marry. There's ways to systematically sort through massive data and apply the principles of pattern recognition where you can turn the problems of finding a needle in a haystack into finding a haystack of needles. Thank you.